Hello everyone and welcome back. Got a fun curvy one for you today. I've been waiting for a good one to record so you can see how I address these curvy shaped canals. You can see the deep carries there on the distal. A lot of this is because of the overhang from the crown. You'll see how I address that in a moment. But let's go ahead and get going for it. You can see a decent sized curve on those mesials. So how are we going to take care of this? Uh, first thing we do with every case is take it out of the bite. <laughs> so that just as you've seen me do before, i um, going to remove those cusps. He's already fractured it a little bit. Certainly don't want this to fracture anymore. And sorry about the, the mess there. I'm <laughs> working with a new assistant. So we're trying to get this as, or technique a little bit better there. But uh, removing all the carries here, you can see it... It's really soft. That that decay is not happy. It's it's very active here. So by the time we get this all done, that we'll have exposed both the palatal and the distal. And a lot of that it comes from just the gingiva. You can already see that that bleeding is actually from gingival overgrowth into the area rather than the actual canal. I haven't even gotten into the palatal canal yet because we still have some softness over here. Uh, that amalgam was not really held down very well there, and that just popped off because it was surrounded by decay as well. So lots of caries in this case. Even still, you'll notice that my axis is going to be a little bit different than normal, and I'll talk about that in just a moment. That bleeding there, that was more gingiva. So I'll you know, show you in a moment how I deal with the gingival tissue as well, because I do restore for this doctor, so that does add a little bit of fun. Well, this first rubber dam change, we actually had to do it twice. <laughs> so you can see the tooth has actually died by this point. Um, nasty necrotic uh, pulp tissue inside there. And what I ended up doing is we've already removed enough tooth structure. I'm going to use a truss style access on this case and drill two holes. The other reason for that is it gives me more of a traditional straight line access to those mesials where the deep curve is, and that's where we start off. So when you're dealing with curved canals, one of the first things you want to do is use something skinny. So I started off there with a 6C file, and I still use the 2006 on the MB1 just to kind of open it up. The case is very long as well. Working length here is about 24 for all the canals. And starting now to hunt for MB2, my MB1 was really straightforward here. Looking at the cone beam, and you know me, I always search for MB2. Just a little bit of troughing here to start to pick it up. Sorry about the little bit of, this is it's supposedly stabilized based on what Da Vinci said, but uh, more in there. I still am not able to grab that MB2. And you can see that dust accumulating in that one little spot. That's where we are going to be going to get this taken care of. So now that we've found a little bit, you can see the 6C file drops inside there, but not very far. This is not a you know, wide open case. And so how are we going to address this? I'm going in here seeing if maybe the 1704 will do much for me. And it really doesn't grab too, too much. The key with these curved canals is you don't want to push apically at all because your risk of breaking the file is very high. And then your ability to remove the file is very low. So what I'm going to do here is now try to use the 2006. Once again, we want to switch between tapers. The 06 taper is going to work a different aspect than the 04. As you can see, still not getting very far. MB1 is looking great. We're, we're down at about you know 18 millimeters. Just starting to pick up a little bit here, but still not as much as I would like. So I'm going to take a break <laughs> and go ahead and reshape the mesial aspect of that crown. You can see where there is a little bit of excess porcelain. So I'm taking one of the workhorse diamonds and just coming along and smoothing that off, making sure that we don't have that bulge that was trapping food like we had before. This is just a small little thing. It's not going to damage the tooth, but it is going to make it a lot easier for the general dentist to get a great contact with the new crown. And I get to tell the patient we did that. So at this point, I'm about ready to rinse, but we are for sure going to have some <laughs> leakage if we don't uh, seal this off. So using a little bit of the Ultranet Blockout Resin here, just to make sure we don't have any nasty taste inside the mouth. Very easy to like here, this super cheap as well. And now I can rinse with Triton because I'm not worried if they taste it. Let's go ahead and get back to doing our MB2 work. At this point, I'm going to be doing some hand filing, which is about the worst possible thing you can have for video. <laughs> so I cut a lot of the actual hand part out, but in general, start with a six, move to an eight, and then eventually you're going to want to move to a 10. Sometimes I'll put a curve on there, sometimes not. But in this case, we, we started to get down a little bit farther with the 10. Make sure you rinse that area out as well. And as you can see, we are making some progress here with that 17, which was the gold from all along as we want to start to use our rotary files to remove it. Once again, 
you want to use rotary files in cases like this because they're going to follow the canal curvature much better than a hand file would. So I don't get completely patent with these on curved canals. I try to work my way down almost in a wave to make it as good as possible. Lots of rinsing, like I said, this is one of the key areas where you, you can really not over rinse here. I'm using a combination of Triton plus uh, EDTA uh, just because that EDTA is very lubricating. Still not able to get all the way in, but we started to have a little bit of improvement. So working length here, just the same as you would always, so I skipped that over. Make sure you rinse before you start using the rotary files as well, because that creates some lubrication inside there. The key here is to put as little stress as possible on the files so they can do most of their work on the actual canals. You'll notice I am brushing measly as well when I come up. At this point, we're ready to shape the palatal and the distal buckle. They were very long. I don't have brasser files in 25. I actually just ordered those, but they're back ordered. So I used an old Edge 1704 that I had. That is the shape on those canals. And as far as the mesials, I had some samples of a SS White V Taper 1403. Extremely small, but a fantastic file. It does click and does pull you in. If you've never used one of these before, it's a different feeling for sure and that's what we did there so to kind of close out this part of the root canal i just wanted to go over some cleaning and shaping tips for these severely curved canals number one is you want to open the access probably a little bit more than you would normally to get more of a straight line uh, you know in this case obviously we did two holes but You've seen me do really small accesses and sometimes you can get away with it, but with a really steep curve that puts a lot of force on the file and you definitely want to minimize that if at all possible. Second recommendation is start small. I used a 6C file here. You saw me go through 6810. I actually cut out a second time of me going through 6810. So you want to keep things as small as possible, which leads me to my set next point, which is stay small. You do not need to open these up to an F2, F3, 35. You're going to break something if you do that, or you're going to strip perf, or you're going to trans move the canal. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> you want to try to stay small as far as your shape. You want to use very little apical pressure as well. Any pressure that you're pushing down, especially with K files, can start to ledge you out. And you want to pre-bend your files and then let the rotary files do the work for you. You do not want to push hard on these at all. Make sure you are constantly rinsing. I used a combination of both Triton and EDTA here. EDTA is fantastic because it is such a lubricating solution. It does an amazing job to make these uh, canals a lot easier. You want to use different size and different tapers of rotary files as well. If you use the same apical size or the same taper, it's going to work the file in the exact same area and it's going to lead to a higher chance of file fracture. That's why I like to use different size tapers. Here I used both 06, 04, and I guess a 03. <laughs> so you want to use multiple sizes of your rotary files. And then finally, be patient. These take a lot longer than your traditional canal. It's going to be a little bit harder, but if you go slowly, use these tips, you should be able to negotiate canals with even more extreme curves than this. All right, so let's go to show how we are going to rinse this out and also operate the case. So the final rinse process is as you've seen before, rinse everything out, use the activator. This is one case where that yellow tip does make a difference here. With these really small sizes, the older medium red tip that Densefly makes is a little bit too large for this area. This is small enough it can go around that curve a lot more easily. Dry everything out as normal. Um, I like to use the air only Stropco to dry it as well. Make sure everything is dry as far as from a paper point standpoint. If you have smaller paper points, this is another area where you'd like to possibly, you know, bring those out. I totally get it. With the squirt technique, you do need everything to be very, very, very dry for it to work. If there's any liquid remaining in the canal, there's an issue. We're able to get everything nice and dry. That's what the image looks like. And you, as you can see, nice straight line access on those mesials. That's the key there is because we were able to do that dual access, that truss style, it works out nicely. Now, you'll notice here I am using a 15 instead of the 20 that I normally use, and that is because the final size on those mesials was 14, so it should fit a little bit better. I kept my little hand filing in there as well because sometimes you do have to do a little bit of hand filing. You want to make sure, especially in a curved case, that it is to the length. When we do the obturation point, I kept a lot of this in actually because it's important to see for those mesials, we're going to do multiple waves. I'm not just going to do one fill it up at once. You need to have that pressure to go around it. And this is where using that nickel titanium 
plugger is so important because it does go around the curve, whereas a stainless steel will just go to where the curve starts and then stop. You can see I can get down about probably 15, 17 millimeters there, and I'm doing that a couple times to just go back through and make sure we have a nice solid pressure all the way down because that's the hardest part with these. For those of you who do use cones or single cone technique, I, I I have some tips coming up, so don't worry, I thought of you guys as well. Uh, but this is pretty much how it works with the squirt technique. So this shows you the squirt technique does work with really severe curves. And pretty much after this, it's just fill it up like normal. Once it's all filled up, then clean out the excess sealer as we have in the past, uh, pop that all off. And in this case, I'm going to go straight in with the Pack Max. I'm not going to take them very far down here. The reason why is because I know it's such a long, curvy case. I, the chance of a void is very, very high here. So may as well just go right in with the PacMax. You'll notice I'm not going very far either here. And that's primarily because we want to make sure we don't break anything off. So just like I did with the cleaning and shaping, I'd like to go over a few tips for the obturation. Most of these will be in regards to the squirt technique that I use in case you use warm vertical or single cone. I have a few tips at the end as well. First is you want to recapitulate with a proper size K file. In this case, because I finished to a 1403, the 20K file, A, it's really stiff, and B, it probably wasn't gonna go patent anyway. That's why you saw me switch to a 15 every other time you've seen me do a case that's 20 or larger that I recapitulate with. But what this does is make sure that there's nothing in the way for the gutta percha or the cone if you're using one of the other techniques to flow to the apex. Second thing is if you're doing squirt technique, you want the highest temperature with the softest gutta percha so that it flows. When you think about as you're injecting this in there, you need to have a lot of force behind it to make sure it goes all the way apically. And if it's not warm enough, it's going to bind too high up in the canal and you're gonna have a short fill. You want to use the smallest gauge tip so you can get it down as far as possible, ideally to the point of where the curve starts. You also want to use the smallest size and most importantly, nickel titanium pluggers that you can. Why Nitai? Because it needs to flex with the canal. Very important there. Next thing is you want to go in multiple waves. So you saw that it took a little bit longer for the obturation than normal. And that's because I was doing multiple waves of condensing. So I would inject a little bit, go down with the Nitai, inject more. And normally at that point, I'm done and I sear it off with the back end of the plugger. In this case though, I would go back down again just to make sure we have a very solid looking obturation. You can use the Pack Mac as needed. You can use a down pack unit if you want. One thing with those Pack Macs, they are very aggressive. You only would really want to go down about a third of the way, certainly not past where the curve is because you're never getting that thing out. This is an aggressive enough file that even just taking it down that far will push the gutta percha apically and get rid of those voids. Finally, if you're using warm vertical or single cone, a couple different things here. You want to make sure that your cone fits properly. And normally when you've seen me do the warm vertical cases or even single cone, Often I will be a little bit short of the working length because I expect that when I do the warm vertical, I'm going to get a little bit of wave of pressure and probably push another millimeter. In a case like this, if I were using a cone, I would want to make sure that it was at the proper length radiographically. This is one where I would check. You, you don't want to leave this because the worst thing that you could possibly do is have to retreat this case. That just sounds absolutely awful. So you want to make sure it's as perfect as it can be from the very beginning. And then if you're using single cone, pretty straightforward as well on this one. Same exact thing, like I said, make sure it goes all the way to your working length. If you're having trouble getting it all the way to the apex, one trick you can use is actually spraying the cone with endo ice or some other refrigerant and that stiffens the cone up really nicely. You may also have to roll out the cone in the higher aspect, the uh, more coronally, because some of the cones have a pretty aggressive taper and they'll bind too far coronally before you can see them all the way. So those are kind of the tips for that. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop a comment below. All right, so let's finish this up. First thing we need to do is control that bleeding here. That gingival tissue was very upset. I had removed the block out material. And what we're going to do now is use the alpha to cauterize, stop bleeding, and remove a little bit of it as well. What this will do is I always give the patients a proxy brush at the end of the appointment when I do this. And it makes it very easy then for the general dentist to go back in and get a beautiful margin down there with really healthy gingiva. If you leave it in this inflamed state, the gingiva is usually going to stay inflamed. 
What I found is that when you remove it like this, it actually just creates beautiful, healthy gum tissue. That's what you want. After we've removed all that, go ahead and clean it up a little bit more with some ferric sulfate just to stop any little bleeders there. And we are pretty much ready to start the restorative process. Now, when we restore a case like this with a truss, it's pretty much the same thing. I try a little bit harder than normal to get a little bit of the composite underneath the truss just because it looks cool <laughs> so go ahead and use the this closing solution blast it all out the blaster is a little bit tough to see here you do want to do some extra blasting underneath that truss as well and that's why i left this in that it's just showing you get to do a little bit more go in now with that phosphoric acid and you can see how it pushes through to the distal aspect when I go inside there and fill it all the way back up. I did clean the mirror in between there so you could see a little bit better. <laughs> we also ran out of etch. So that's what it looks like when it's all blasted, cleaned off, very healthy, nice looking tooth structure. And from here on out, it's pretty much the same thing that we do. Clear fill for the Prima M bond. Make sure you scrub it, air thin it, light cure. I took all that off because you all know how that works. And then we're gonna fill it up. I used Build It, I use these for all my molars and you can see how it goes underneath that truss right away. That's exactly what we want. That means our final x-ray is gonna look super cool. <laughs> it's what it's all about. It's all about doing it for, you know, I don't, I'm not on Instagram, but it's doing it for the gram, you know? And that's the idea is you want to make sure that we have that nice flow of composite underneath the truss that also tells the general dentist that they don't need to worry about there being excess tissue underneath there because you have cleaned that all out. Go in now with the Glick to smooth everything off. And I like to start the prep almost using the Glick, and that's what you saw me do at the end there. And it makes it a lot easier to get a clean margin. Now we're gonna go in with our wheel burr, flatten it all out because we already flattened out at the beginning. So just get it down to where it was in the first place. Pretty straightforward here. And then finally go in with the prep burr. With the prep burr, this is what's so nice about removing that gingival tissue is that it's it's already gone. It's about the space of the prep burr. I've noticed that unless there's severe crowding or shifting from caries or things like that, the usual space between teeth is the width of this prep burr. So it's a fantastic burr for getting inside there and getting really clear margins. And what this allows the dentist to do is just see with it's extremely white and even with loops, you can go in and see exactly where the margin is. Now, depending on the general dentist, some of them are cool with deep marginal elevation. I think I've shown a case, if not, I'll, I'll do one soon. But I have some great cases that some of my favorite dentists have been felt comfortable sharing with me and very cool technique. Other dentists want to put the crown margin on tooth structure, which is totally fine as well. Either way, this material makes it very easy to do that because you can see exactly where that transition is. And then finally, you want to smooth everything off for the patient so nothing's rough. That barrel burr is fantastic for this. It just gets those sharp right angles that you created when you used the flat wheel burr. And that's what it looks like. So very clean, ready for the prep there. That's what the final x-ray looks like. You can see those curves are filled. The MBs did join up there. I did want to give a shout out to the viewer who suggested this video. As always, I read all the comments. And if you have anything else you'd like to see, please drop a comment below. As always, Thank you guys so much for watching. I make these videos for all of you and I really appreciate all the love and support I've had from here. Um, if you have any questions, always drop them below. Please subscribe. The more subscribers we get, the more I know that you guys are loving this. Uh, hit that like button because the algorithm, you know, we're all slaves to it. So, and I will talk to you all next time.